start doing this in this first editing part of the program and offer you technically how we do it. And then towards the end of the presentation, we're gonna show you, and I'm gonna minimize this and maximize this part. This is gonna be the final, how it actually gonna look like at the end for our presentation, the short 14 or 15 minutes. So we're gonna see how it actually looks at the end. So we're gonna minimize this for the moment. We, gonna, we don't use it now. We're gonna back into our editing program. So we start, we start with the, excuse me, we start with our, with our editing uh, and with, uh, with the clip that we wanna, that we wanna go to. For the, for the time being and for the, for the sake of saving some time, I'm gonna use a little bit of a fast forward mode just to get, uh, just to, get to certain cutting points. We're gonna, we are watching the team in, we're preparing for Alba, so we're watching for the team in yellow as far as their offense, as far as their defense. And our main entry point is gonna be when the ball crosses the half court. So I'm gonna slide the cursor a little bit back. I'm gonna use the in point, which is gonna be my cutting point. And I'm gonna continue on to the offense that we're gonna to try to cut. In this situation, we see that the defensive team is running the zone defense. So this alternative part is not as interesting to us maybe uh, as, as, we wanna, as we wanna see. But what is interesting for us, Offensively, maybe not, but for individual characteristic, we're going to use Peyton Siva for his outside shot. So we're going to use another end point when Peyton Siva releases the ball, and we will use all this to set up his three point shot. We will put end point, end point, and this part is going to be our Peyton Siva first cut. Everything that happened before that we don't need. We will not need, so we're gonna delete it to free up some space for us. And now if you look at our timeline, like we said at the beginning, this is our timeline, our working space. This is our Peyton Siva cut that we're gonna have in our presentation part if we're gonna need it. So this is our first part, in point, end point. This we're gonna leave at the end, and I'm gonna cut few pieces just to get an idea, and then we're gonna go into title slides when we're gonna show you briefly what and how we use when we create titles for the presentation. This comes up a little bit later, so I will, I will just go back to that in, in a minute. So we have our first, first cut and we continue to watch the game. Again, for the purpose of uh, speeding up, I'm gonna use it a little bit of times two speed and I'm gonna skip this because it's an off-screen defense, but for instance, if we wanna show how our opponent team or how they have some struggles defending, for example, off-screen defense, we can use that. We don't use it, we don't show it unless it's individual clip. So I'm gonna skip it for the part, for the part of this presentation. Again, uh, Real Madrid stayed in a zone defense. Peyton Siva made another three-point shot. We're not gonna keep both of them, which is gonna, we're gonna skip through this and move to the, uh, to the defensive part of the game. Third time, third time, the same off-screen offense, and we are we are not interested in that. But the part that comes up right now is another interesting part that can be interesting part for us. They are setting up another potentially individually uh, individual characteristic, which was dropped by the foul, so we don't need it. But they're going into their out of bounds situation, so we're gonna move it all the way to the out of bounds. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the right uh, beginning point due to the television commercial. So this will not be used and we're gonna skip through it and keep it, uh, keep it there and keep it out. All these points are out of, the, out of the picture and we're moving again to the defensive side of the ball, which was a fast uh, transition point and we're gonna skip through that. So, we are moving, moving as we go along, as we watch. Here, there was a quick shot in transition, something that we couldn't see because of the ca uh, camera angle. So we're not gonna use it and it was a miss as well. So we're not gonna use it for the individuals. On the other side, they received the basket. 
another thing that we can use, but it was a scramble. It was, it was a transition point and we're going to skip it. But here was a good opportunity for us maybe to show a transition offense, early run, fast runs, but it was a miss or a turnover. So we're not going to use it. We're going to skip through it. Basically, while doing this, I don't want to go too fast so we can all be on a similar page. While doing this type of an editing, while doing this type of a going to the game, we are looking for specifics that we think and we feel are uh, describing the system that this team right, likes to run. While doing so, we want to keep it at three, maybe two clips of each segment, which presents what, what happens with the team. While doing that, also, we need to look for a good example. We need to look for a made basket. That's why I said in these situations, when there's a turnover, when there's a missed basket, we cannot maybe use that clip, uh, clip uh, rightly. So we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to move on with the presentation. With the uh, with edit. here, for instance, we have a first example of our defensive, uh, potentially defensive clip. Uh, we're going to use the inbound the ball when the point guard gets the ball as an in point. So this part that we had until now, we don't need. So we deleted it, and we are back when the point guard gets the ball. Now there's a pick and roll, pick and pop action, or actually pick and roll in this situation between one and four, and a clear basket. So here, we want to put end point after the basket was made, and this part that we have, cut it here, we're going to use in our defensive clip. Remember, at the beginning of the presentation, we said we want to focus on three different aspects, individuals, offense, and defense. This part is a very good example of pick and roll defense one and four or individual defense of Luke Sigma in this case. Basket was scored, we cut it. Now the timeout was taken, so we're gonna delete this part. We don't need it. And in this first segment that we've cut, if you look in our timeline now, we have two clips that we cut it and that we're gonna use potentially for our final presentation. First is an individual clip. Second is a defensive clip. Now, to make our job a little bit easy as we continue on with the segments that are coming here in this part, segment two, three, and so on, we're gonna go for a minute for a title slide and we're gonna mark these with the titles so we can have, so we can have clearly as we go on what is placed where. So here, I'm gonna create a title slide which here I can keep it as two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, however I want. I'm gonna use this title slide, shorten it up a little bit to two, three seconds, and I'm gonna open it. And here we said, this is pretty basic. It's, uh, I'm gonna write what I wanna hear, what I wanna have in a final presentation and to make my job easier now as I cut what I place where. Here I'm gonna choose the font, I'm gonna choose the, I can, options of choosing everything here in this corner, but these are basic stuff uh, for editing parts. So I'm gonna focus on this, and I'm gonna make a title slide, Alba. One second, sorry. Alba, preparation. This is gonna be my first title slide. I'm gonna say okay to save it. And now, if you look here, I have my first title slide, and after that title slide, I'm gonna copy, paste it again, and I'm gonna say it here to make it a little bit more shorter to two more seconds. I'm gonna make second slide title for myself, individual characteristics. I'm gonna save this slide again. So the first part, I know that I have my individual characteristic clip here, and I'm gonna make it even easier for myself. So I'm gonna say point guards, just so I know what I'm sliding where. Again, I okayed it. So I have these prepared for my individual, but for the second slide here, I'm gonna make a new title slide and I'm gonna say defense. Defense as a main title slide, and as a secondary uh, slide into this segment, I'm gonna insert pick and roll. Or you here have a freedom of naming these things however you want. I'm just giving you an example of what we do 
you can put here pick and roll defense four, pick and roll, but whatever you feel. I'm just giving you a little bit of uh, examples of what is done here. So I'm going to say pick and roll defense. So I have created a little bit of uh, a little bit of let's say title slides here with the, with the segments. So it's going to make my job easier as I go along cutting what I'm going to place where. So I did this, and to make my job safe, we always prefer saving stuff because you never know with computers, sometimes electricity can go down, sometimes something can happen. So you always want to go ahead and say, save movie as Alba preparation. And again, I'm going to save it. Now, as I did this, while I'm working, while I'm cutting, editing, uh, maybe I want to share something with a coaching staff. Maybe coach wants to come and see something individually, say, okay, keep this, don't take this. We want to have everything saved as we go along towards our final product. So we, we move back from the titles to our second segment following the timeout that was called. And... We're going to put this part here. You have an option of putting it at the end of your, on a title uh, slide, on a, on a cutting part, or you want to put it at the beginning. So whatever is, makes more sense. Personally, as I go along, I like to put it at the end. So I know what's, what I've done, what I've done before. Here, now to review, we have this part here that we prepared. Later on, we're going to present it. It's going to look like this. Alba preparation, three, four seconds, individual characteristics, point guards. And we're going to go with Peyton Siva. We're going to talk about more about these slides. So this is first. Now, putting that aside, we go back to the second quarter. And we can use the maximized part of the screen. Or we can watch it through here. Now, all these things, you can adjust to yourself, whatever is easier for you to do while you're while you're working and whatever it's meant more, more, not only fast, but whatever's more efficient for you. We continue with action following the timeout. Here we see that they're not in the zone defense anymore. There's a potential, there's a potential uh, set offense that we don't know the name as of right now, but they scored a bucket. They had a lot of, uh, they had some action going on. With the back pick so and again they score the bucket and we just opened the game so i will keep this clip just to make sure maybe it's going to be useful for us later on so again we have an end point following the basket stop this is our in an end point this part i want to keep and this part now to make easier for ourselves i'm going to cut and paste to the following segment. Now I'm going back all the time. I have individual characteristics. I have defense at the end. Now this is the offense. So again, for making my job easier later on, I'm going to copy, paste, and put here a new title slide. It's going to call offense. Offenses. We don't know the name of this offense yet, but we're going to keep it for time being. So now, again, I have here on the timeline, individual, offense, defense, and the segment that I need to cut. I go on with the game, and we follow. Here, while we're watching, we want to, again, pay, pay attention to a few things. Uh, pay attention to the repetition of certain sets. Pay attention of repetition of certain pick and roll habits that may happen here or uh, defensive habits that we, we might want to show. Here, for example, there is one interesting clip of their point guard, again, as an idea, going aggressively and trying to be overly aggressive with the ball, not giving up on the screens, and uh, winning, the, winning the defensive foul on, on offensive movement. So this is, interestingly for us, later on, we're going to keep this with an end point. Delete. Again, we always go back to the beginning part that we want to keep, keep. And we're going to keep this clip. Maybe, 
as an individual characteristic of a hustle play of an aggressive on ball defender. So I'm going to cut, move it to my individual characteristic, but I'm going to move it behind paint on Siva because we talk about a different player at this time. So this is my second uh, potential individual clip in our, uh, in our presentation. We move on with an action. And now Alba is becoming an offensive team. They, uh, Real Madrid switched to going back to the man-to-man -man defense. And here, now we have a first offense that was actually man-to-man -man set, ran all the way through with the missed open uh, look on a three-point shot. Here, we didn't, uh, we didn't see a basket, we didn't see a call, and the action itself wasn't clear enough so we will say for the time being, we're not going to keep this clip. We're going to skip and move on to the next clips. Maybe there's going to be something better uh, in, in the process. Now, I'm going to use short break just to, just to uh, emphasize a few things. When we prepare for our games, for the EuroLeague games, for the Turkish League games, for any game, we have some sort of standards that we have and that we've set. We use minimum uh, coaching staff. Uh, all together, we, we see and we watch minimum three games, at times four to five games, depending on how many times we play this opponent so far, how often do we play them, EuroLeague, Turkish League together. Sometimes we play one team five, six times, so we need maybe a little bit less of time. And while doing so, we like to watch backwards. What does it mean backwards? Uh, let's say right now we watch Alba Real Madrid before we prepare for Alba. And we always want to see last three to four games for the top competition. Meaning, if we play EuroLeague team, we want to see minimum of their last three games. And we want to add maybe one or two more if certain things are unclear. Also, by saying this, this is why I said, for example, I'm going to move this and I'm not going to, not going to keep this offense. There was a missed shot. We didn't see it quite clearly. Because for sure, if this offense is important, if this offense is something that they run uh, uh, for, for a long time or run it many times, we're going to see it in not this game, but in second or third game or fourth game as the coaching staff is watching. So this is one thing just to, just to keep clear uh, in mind before we move on. So now we moved on to the action and uh, we're looking for, uh, for something specific on Alba's defense. Nothing specific happened there because unfortunately, again, a lot of times when you're watching uh, games that are televised on, on commercial TV, you will have a lot of breaks. Uh, for example, this one uh, fall due, to the, due to the commercial. So here was an easy basket score on a low post action on the forward. Uh, we will not keep this for the time being and we are moving on with an action. Something happened on the other side, a quick hit uh, that was broken. It was a good defense by Madrid. We didn't we didn't get anything on the Alba action, but we are going to be facing here potential out-of-bounds situation. Now, there's a baseline out-of-bounds opportunity. We like to keep baseline out-of-bounds or sideline out-of-bounds if they are applicable, if they are something they're, let's say, specific, if there are specific angles that have to be defended in a walkthrough or we want to alert our team here. Madrid, again, switch back to the zone. This is something that we don't do. So we're not going to show uh, something that they are attacking or some sort of a mode that they have against the zone because, let's say, we are not preparing our defense for that. So we're going to uh, move on in, in action. Back on defense. And here was nothing except, the, let's say, bad cut defense. But this is something that we don't, uh, we don't emphasize on. So we will... Uh, we will skip. Now, here is one emphasis that we want to keep. Why? We want to show, for example, that they receive the basket. They receive the basket. And so we cut the part before. Now we're back at the point where they receive the basket. And we want to show that the tendency of this team that we're going to face, Alba in this case, is to run, is to take quick shots, is to go and play one against five at times. Even though they missed right now, we're going to keep this clip just to show our team that this is a dangerous point 
of their of their system. So we're gonna keep this clip, we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna paste it into our offensive clip at the beginning. And we will put one more title slide. We're gonna copy, paste it, and we're gonna say transition. Please, uh, let me just ask, uh, is there something that needs to be reviewed? Is there something technically that's maybe unclear or is there something that I should redo over just so I don't go uh, skipping, skipping steps? Please, if, uh, if there's something uh, that you can tell me. No problem, you can keep going on. Uh, some, uh, I don't know why you, for me a little bit unclear, but uh, for other coaches, maybe it's clear. Uh, just tell me, uh, tell me whatever. I can share something and then you can continue. Come on. Uh, coaches, uh, Tomislav is a great professional on what he does and he always makes this way. He has his way uh, using this clinical software. He is really fast and quick on his job and he has to be like that because we play at least two games, some weeks, three games, sometimes four games in uh, seven days. Uh, during this season. So uh, this is the, uh, when you see his screen, you are uh, watching his screen right now, clinical screen. This is his version of the clinical. But clinical also has a little bit uh, simpler uh, timelines, let's say. Tomislav is using most advanced mode. Tomislav, if you can stop share screen, I will show my screen. So tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, it will give a maybe uh, small idea of the coaches. Tell me, tell me. I'm stopping right now. Okay. Now. Sorry, I will stop share because I didn't optimize. I will share again. Now, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yes, this is same software, clinical. But Tomislav was watching the video on this line. He was making edits here. In my version, I you can change the... Uh, timeline from here. This is Tomislav's timeline. This is empty right now because I haven't done anything. I prefer this version of timeline. Now, I usually prepare these titles that Tomislav showed you how to do that uh, in advance. Before I start to edit a team, I have this empty format. Then I select the game of our opponent same game like Tomislav, Verbal, Alba Berlin. I select the game, then my video pops out here. And I don't directly watch like Tomislav, full game. I first, Pinnacle has this option, I first divide this video into 20 seconds, this is too small. Let's select another video from same game. I first divide video into 20 seconds parts. So I start to watch, let's say I like one, I'm not gonna uh, stop on basketball uh, person purposes. Let's say I like this highlight, and this let's say this is their one down. I they, I like to drag it and put it into one down. This is a little bit simple uh, than what Tomislav coach is doing, but it's all same. At the end, uh, we will end up with the same final product. I just want to show you a simple version of this Pinnacle. Pinnacle is a great software, not specifically for basketball, but uh, a really simple and multifunctional editing software like Tomislav Coach said. And this is why we uh, continue using this.
so if I continue to watch, let's say I will find a Campasso, για τον Ταβάρες Uh, I will share screen now. Share it. I'm uh, uh, I'm adding on what Coach Jakub said basically, uh, and I want to emphasize uh, on all levels uh, that we do and that you do, coaches on on all levels, on all countries, um, on all competitions. This editing program is something that you should be comfortable with because this is a tool to do what we have to do. We have to analyze the game, dissect the game, and find the specifics in the game. So we wanted to share, as Coach Jakub said, we wanted to share this part that we have with Pinnacle. We feel comfortable with this. We work with this, and we have many, many games throughout the season. So a lot of times, uh, even though we're in a, you know on the same plane, we go from one plane to the next plane, we got to cut, prepare, this and that. We talk what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. So you got to find something. This program is something that is going to help you be fast, productive, and efficient because that's the most important part. So uh, hopefully this adds up a little bit uh, of, 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 on, your, on your future uh, endeavors with, with the certain programs that you have. And again, it's a freedom of choice. Whatever you want to choose for you, this is just, a, just an example for us. Uh, let's just continue a little bit and move a little bit further uh, down because uh, uh, we want to we want to we want to share a few more things as we said we stopped if you remember with the transition attempt that it was happened here so uh, slowly as you can see here on the left side of my timeline we are developing our 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 final product little little by little step by step so we have our individuals we have our offensive parts and we have our defensive part now we move on to the segment 3 meaning what happens on on one more on one more defensive segment, it was a foul drawn uh, by Hermanson, so nothing, uh, nothing for us to uh, to to do. But here, for example, it's something uh, that ca uh, catches our eye, and that we should maybe alert our players, especially if if we have a similar offensive system, and most of the teams in Europe do. Alba struggled with it, so let's say we're gonna put. Beginning point here, we're going to delete everything we saw before we didn't need it. We're going to go back to the when the point guard, Campazzo, catches the ball. Pick and roll happens. And now they have they have made a mistake defensively in a pick and roll action with the back pick. So pick and back pick caused them a problem, open shot from the wing. We want to use it, and we're going to keep it in the pick and roll segment for now, for the time being. So we kept that. They received the basket. Real Madrid is going to go into the zone. So this part more than likely will not be applicable because it's against the zone defense unless there's some sort of a situation such as this. For instance, for the time being, yes, it was a zone defense. Yeah, it was a missed basket. But we saw one interesting segment for us, and we're going to keep it. What happened? Drive happened. Missed layup. But offensive rebound reaction, yes, against the zone, but a tendency of the player to go for it is something that may be applicable for us later on. So we're going to use it, we're going to cut it, and we're going to slide it all the way to the beginning to our individual characteristics. Now, here, uh, uh, I would like uh, 
to 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 share and to to add one more thing in creating of our slide just to make it just to make it more clear. Here uh, I have I have uh, now one part of our individual characteristics that have to be renamed or added uh, to to a certain extent. Why? Because now I said point guards, and I have one clip of Peyton Siba, and I have one clip of defensive of of Masicek, and I have one offensive clip of of one defense offensive rebound of their center. In this situation, I will add one more title slide, and I'm going to say copy paste here. I'm going to put Peyton Siva. And I'm going to move it here, and I'm going to create a title slide. I'm going to go one by one right now, quickly. And he's, let's say, a number one for the time being. And here, I want to have their average, his averages until certain, until this game. So on the EuroLeague site or whatever statistics you may use, we put here, for example, he plays 25 minutes. He averages seven points. And what is the important quality for him? How many assists? Let's say he averages four assists uh, per game. So here is going to be one more title slide for the later on time being, which you're going to see in the final presentation, that's going to be helpful. So here I had it for Peyton Siva. I have the same thing for Jonas Masicek. Uh, again, these numbers right now, I'm shortening up a little bit for the time being. Numbers are not obviously correct. Same thing for the, for him, 20 minutes, how many points and how many assists. And for the latest one, we said Landry and Nokor. And we say same thing like here, or we say he averages, let's say, six rebounds. Now, and also, I'm doing this just to show you presentation-wise how while doing something in this system, before, before, doing, before doing anything else, you can help yourself while you're watching, so you can just cut, paste, edit, and put your put your program in in a position where while you're doing it, you're preparing your edit or longer version of your edit. So, for example, up until now we have Alba preparation, individual individual characteristics, point guards, Peyton Siva, his clip, and here's going to be his three point shot that we made. Following which is going to be Jonas Masicek, which is also a point guard. So we're going to copy paste here this and followed by the center same thing we have landed noko his offensive rebound and then we move on with our presentation this by doing so while you're watching you don't fall behind on things that you saw because a lot of times as the games go on as you finish this real madrid game you're going to move to second game third game fourth game a lot of these things on this side of the pile, is there's going to be more and more. Why? You're going to keep here maybe 10 clips or 7 clips of point guard, but as you filter the final filter for the presentation for the team, you're going to keep maybe 3 or 4. So you need to put them all in right alignment to help yourself later on when after 2-3 days of work, you're going to sit down and you're going to cut everything that you really need that's really essential for your final presentation. This is one way of doing it, not the right way, it's one way of doing it that hopefully helps helps the cause a little bit. Here we move on to the action now after the offensive rebound and nothing happened there for us after offensive rebound they missed the basket, uh, transition action happens and 
they received a quick basket. So this is something that we are not going to keep because nothing interesting for us happened except that they are running back in transition pretty pretty bad. So maybe we want to keep it, but for, for the time being, no. Again, Madrid is in zone. Not interesting for us. They received the easy basket, but against the zone, so we don't want to keep it. Maybe something happens here. No, an easy basket. Now, one, one thing in a game happens now that we have to pay attention to, and we do pay attention. First changes happen. First changes come from the bench. Now, we want to, when we, I'm going to cut it here and leave the end point. When we make presentation for our team, we like to make it as game realistic or opponent realistic as possible. So we want to hear in individual characteristics, as we talked about, we want to keep them in some sort of an order. We like to present starting lineup or presumable starting lineup. Let's say something that we saw happens as their more tendency to start with certain five. So we present point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center as one, two, three. And then we move on to the players six, seven, eight, nine, ten by position. So we're going to show guards, forwards, power forwards, and centers, if that makes sense. Everybody can present how they do. I'm telling you what we do, what's, let's say, uh, logical for us. This brings me back to a point. They made rotations now, so they have backup players or they have the players coming from the bench, new players for us for our individual characteristics or for the offense, depending what, what happens. But Madrid stays in zone for this point. So only thing that can happen was an open three or offensive rebound, but they missed the putback. So we're not going to use this clip. We're not going to materialize, materialize on this clip. And they again, Receive the basket in transition. Now, this happened second time. What does this tell me? This tells me that this could be a tendency. This could be a tendency that they don't like to run back. So, for the time being, I'm going to put, go back to the missed offensive opportunity following the offensive rebound, and I'm going to show that their centers and their guards, their alignment is something that they're not running back so well at and I'm going to keep this just for me at the end of my defensive defensive clip note just for the later if, if there's going to be something that maybe you want to show your head coach and say listen coach uh, I saw this four or five times they receive easy basket check this out just just to have it in the edit again their Madrid is in zone they will get out of the zone pretty soon but they receive the basket now in this situation here they received the basket in the zone, but it matched up. So it was actually four men against going against four men. Tabano going against Randolph. And he scored a basket in some sort of a traffic. So this play could potentially be interesting for us later on for Tyler Cavano for his individual characteristics. So I'm going to cut it, keep it. I'm going to save it for me now. And later on, like I talked before, when I'm going to make a final edit, we're going to talk with the rest of the coaches. We're going to discuss what we want to show. But for now on, I'm keeping Cavano in his power forwards clip here. I'm going to name it power forwards. And I will say this is something that becomes obviously um, a habit of doing. I'm going to say what he plays power for the center. He is a 204. Uh, number 12, again, these things are uh, applicable. And I'm going to put the uh, lead numbers now. It's not important. So now we have uh, him also in the individual characteristics. We go back to the end. Like I said, we can put a beginning and end. At the end of the segment to follow what happens in the, in the last part of the segment before, obviously, uh, following timeout. Here... 
is another segment of the defense that can be interesting for us later on. What happened? Pick and roll defense. Pick and roll defense. They reacted to face fake opposite. Their big men jumped fast. And they received an easy basket. Again, we're going to use it for now. And we're going to keep it just to, to in, a, in a pick and roll segment. Maybe it's going to be interesting for us later on. They received the basket. Uh, one more timeout coming up. We're going to delete this part. And here, before doing anything else, I have, as you can see now, it's building. It's getting bigger and bigger. I for sure want to save it just so I don't do something silly with it later on. And now, before moving on, I'm going to add one more thing into these title slides. So it's going to make the presentation at the end, uh, again, more better and more clear. I'm going to go back to titles and I'm going to use the overhead title slides. So as you can see, here I have options of titles. What do I want to write? How I want to write? Which font, what colors, whatever else I want to do. I like to keep it basic. We like to put like that. But I have a side or under, and I have on top option of putting a title slide on top. This is going to be the situation where I put the title slide on top. Why is this interesting? Because you will see later on in presentation, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to say, with the title slide, I can put it at the bottom, at the top, wherever I want. We like to keep it at the top so the players can see it clearly. I'm going to say Peyton Siva. I'm going to say that he's a point guard. And all the things that we wrote there, he's 191. And he's number, let's say, zero or one, a zero. And I'm going to extend this throughout this clip. So this is... Uh, something that makes the presentation part later on a little bit more visible for the players. So as they see, okay, now we're going to see a clip of Peyton Siva. These are his averages. This is his side. These are his averages. Okay. We move on and we see his clip. On the top part, it's going to say what happened, what, what is his, what is his uh, number, what is his uh, centimeters, what is his uh, position. But also, we can do, and what we do like, uh, we can use this title slide to put a message to a players before they watch a clip. For example, we say, for example, again, and we're going to, we can put this wherever we want. We can add to this part. We can add color. We can add uh, numbers. We can add whatever we like. Let's say let's put red just to stand out a little bit. So now we have, and everything we did here, we clear. We're okay. We want to save it. So now, as we watch these clips later on, we're going to see Peyton Siva. And we're going to say this is going to be a clip that we want to alert. Okay, he's a dangerous from a three-point shot. Be aware or don't jump on the fix. Any kind of message you want to put, you can put, you can color it, and it's going to be easier later on for the presentation, for the players to see and to understand what we try to, what we try to do. So these are, these are title slides now, just not to waste any time for the time of the presentation. These title slides on the top side that we put for Peyton Siva, we're going to put for all the other players. We're going to put for offenses. For example, here we have transition. I'm going to just for the time being use the copy paste and I'm going to say transition runs and I'm going to say here they look They look to take quick threes. So later on, as we have our presentation, when we go into our transition part of the set, there's going to be transition. There's going to be transition runs. And our message to the team is they like to take quick threes or they like to attack quickly. They want to take quick shots. 
So this is something that sticks in their mind when they watch. We like to keep this part here, for example, as we present transition offense, we start our set offenses with transition or fast break runs. We will keep two or three clips of those, and then we'll move to set offenses. Here, we will keep, we will keep maybe five, sometimes six, sometimes seven, depending on, on, the, on the opponent that we play, of their main sets that we feel are the best sets that describe the system that we are, we are facing in. And same thing is gonna be for defense. We will keep maybe five uh, defensive uh, principles in pick and roll, maybe five defensive principles in, in switching, alternative defense, something like that. So if you agree, uh, I will move on. Uh, please tell me uh, if there's something in the meantime to, to pay attention to, you want me to move on, what do you, uh, what do you feel like? Are you, are you gonna continue? I'm gonna, and my idea is to, uh, to do this part to show you how I save it, and then at the, towards the end, uh, to show the final clip of this, how it looks at the end. Okay, no, for, yeah, keep going on. Uh, go for it, Demon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. idea. It's a very good idea. Okay, so I will just I will just continue for for the for the for the part of the of the of this uh, quarter. So, as you see right now, as we look to our left side of our screen, the things that are checked and the things that are behind. This is what we did so far. These are what we haven't done. So we move to segment four. We're gonna copy it, paste it and again. I like to keep it at the end. You can keep it in the middle. You can keep it wherever you want. Or you can just, let me delete it. You don't have to copy paste it. You can just drag and drop it. As Coach Jakub showed you a little bit earlier. All these options are whatever you feel like doing. So we're moving on with the quarter following the timeout. Again, our entry point into the offense will be before the crossing of the, of the half court. We like to do it like that because here we can see either the signal, we can see the entry point, what they like, how they like to enter the offense. And here was a semi-broken play, semi-confusion play. Was it zone offense? Was it zone defense? Was it whatever? So it wasn't really a good example for us. And we're gonna move on from here. Going back to the defensive part, again, off-screen defense, uh, off-screen offense of Madrid, off-screen defense for Alba, nothing for us to, uh, to see that we wanna emphasize on. And Here was almost an example of the quick shot that we wanna that we wanna take, but it wasn't a success, so we will we'll get out of it. There was a foul drawn by Kavanaugh or on Kavanaugh, and now here is something that we for the, for the purpose of now, we want to keep. Even though it was a zone, we want to put end point here or the beginning point here. We delete every time just to keep it more short, more clean, more neat for us to watch. We will keep this for uh, Gudraitis. We want to keep his floater shots. So he made a basket in the floater. We want to put, again, end point. This is part of Gudraitis that we checked here, okay. And we will cut and go to our individual players, to our individual characteristics. We have guards, we have power forwards. Good right is the small forward. We're gonna copy paste here it, copy, paste again. And we're gonna rename it into small forwards. Okay. It, same principle, building a title slide, and go back to our continuation of the game. As the game flow goes, you're becoming more and more aware of what, what the tendencies of the team are and how much you can 
look for how much you can skip how much you you don't have to pay attention to if something but most of the times especially watching the first or second game you want to capture as much as possible friendly advice here again the same thing happened it's a zone doesn't matter we want to show for the time being end point beginning point here i'm going to go back a little bit pinnacle offers you two options first option is in and out points with your own cursor with the with manually you can do it here it says split clips as you can see or you can design keys on your on your laptop you usually are three keys J and L for fast forward and backwards and space key for in and out. So you can use the keys to work on this or you can use the cursor or the mouse. This is from the technical, from the how, how to do things. Uh, this is, uh, this is, they can be done like this as well. Now, uh, we cut it and have an end point here because Gudraitis made a quick three, even though it was a zone defense by Madrid, we want to keep this for Gudraitis. He's a great shooter. We want to show that he's always ready to shoot regardless of, and he needs to be matched up quickly. He cannot be left alone. So we're going to go to small forwards and keep it in his, keep this in his clip. And again, go back to our, to our uh, segment. Uh, I was talking about it before, before I went to the technical details of the keyboard. Friendly advice, uh, as you watch games, uh, and Coach Jakub can watch for this as well, as you start watching uh, at the beginning, you always keep more now, as you watch first game and second game. The cuts, they're gonna keep more, more and more and more of those. You're gonna have a lot of those. But, as uh, this is good, because you wanna get, the, get yourself familiar with the opponent as much as possible. But as you watch the final filter and you make the final edit, you're gonna make it from big, to small or to the unnecessary, to the most necessary part. So you go big, you start big, and you shrink it, filter it, and you become, it becomes a 10 to 12 minute video for the team to present. So now, again, in the moment while I was talking, we saw one situation which was interesting. Big man, ready to shoot. Tyler Kavanaugh, good shooter, can never underestimate him. It was a foul on the shot. We want to show that he's a, he's a big man, but he's a shooter. So we're going to slide it into his power forward flip, copy paste. So now if you go back, we have power forwards. We have Tyler Cabano. We have clips that we put first his shot. Second, his one-on-one -on -one closeout attack, winning the foul or making the basket. Now, so now we have two clips of his. While you're within the segment of of your edit. So for example, here I'm on a timeline, on a timeline of power forwards. I can move, copy, paste, show whatever I want, however I want, whatever is my prefer preference. What we like to do, and what we like to show and teach our players, we always show the most common traits of a player first, then the secondary or third option. So here for Tyler Kavanaugh, we moved and we said, okay, First, he's a shooting big. So we want to show the, this part first, his shots, dangerous shots. Second, we're going to show his one-on-one -on -one ability, floating shots or winning baskets there in the paint. So this is something that you can order in any way you can, and the software allows you to move it and to slide it and to do whatever you want there. But the important thing to keep in mind is you always want to show the first quality and characteristic of the player in the first clip, and then you move back or uh, forward. Here, there's going to be three-point shot attempts, and we're closing into the last offense or the last defense of the first quarter of the game. Here again, here is something, if you recall, we did before. Again, end point, delete, here is something that's important for us. Two things happened in a pick and roll defense. The guard reacted on the fake opposite and the big man wasn't ready to come. 
So even though they missed the basket here on Madrid, there, there was a clear opportunity for them to score. So if you remember, I'm going a few clips back where we said, okay, react opposite, and they received the three. Now here, react opposite, and they missed the layup. So we have two identical situations that's easy for us to keep now for the presentation and we will and we will uh, we will go ahead and, and go go to that so we have two of those now kept in our defensive in our defensive uh, pick and roll block so this is brings in, brings us to the end of the end of the first quarter or towards the end of the first quarter there was a foul foul drawn and the last offense of alba Three-point shot, something that we for sure want to keep because their tendency as a team, they're a good three-point shooting team. So we want to alert our players by many, uh, many situations that this is something that we should never allow them to do. Hermanson makes a three-point shot with the uh, shot clock winding down. So we will keep this and we will cut it, slide it to the Point guards, but this is going to be Martin Hermanson. So it's a new clip, new slide for him. We're going to place him second. And this brings us towards the end of the first quarter. And in the first quarter, if you look in our timeline now, you have, we have created so far almost two and a half minutes of potential clips for us. Two and a half minutes of offense, defense, and individual characteristics. If you agree, uh, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to bug you too much with the technical details. Uh, if you agree, uh, coaches, I would like to show you now. Pretend like this is the end part of of what we did so far. And I'm going to move from here to saving this, exporting this into the final clip, and then show you the final edit how how it looks. Or if you have some questions. Now or questions later, uh, tell me how you want to approach uh, this now. I, I think uh, good to see the export and final. Uh, okay. Final. Okay. And okay. after that, we will uh, start question and answer. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, we are here. We have put title slides, uh, and we are at the point where we wanna where we wanna burn this to the to the file. We have here two situations. We have import and export. In import is import we use when we want to import anything from the desktop uh, to our to our editing program. For example, here was the Alba game. So this was the import part. Export part, if we click on export, it'll open. And here it presents us with an with our with our project. And here on the left side, it's asking us how we want to save it as an export type file, cloud, device, my DVD file, settings here. We can set up settings manually. We like to use it in my DVD file because it's going to burn it into MP4 file. As an MP4 file, you can present it as a file. You can present it as a single clip. You can present it if you want to burn it to DVD, if you want to burn it to a next computer, if you want to send it uh, via, via retransfer, it's a very comfortable, very short, very small file that can be shared easily. This is very good at this time and day. So we are going to use it as a DVD file. And here we're going to set up like it is. And we're going to say start export. While I'm exporting it, before I export it, I have to name the file. So I'm going to say Alba Prepare or Alba Meeting. And I'm going to say save. And here, it's giving me status of exporting and how many percent it's done. While this is being uh, while this is being completed, this takes generally, I would say, uh, no more than uh, no more than 15, 20 minutes, depending on the size of the file. But this is generally uh, a process. They'll take between 15 and 20 minutes to complete the file. Afterwards, what we like, and I, I'm going back and I repeat it, 
we like to use it in MP4 file because it shrinks the file. It's small, it's visible, it's good quality, and it can get, it can be easily shared. You can put it on different different types of the different types of the media, and it's very practical. Pinnacle allows you to burn it and send it into cloud, send it into into different different things, and all the other all the other editing programs allow you to do this. So this is a standard now while doing and dealing with the with the files. So this is something that uh, that we do over and over again, and it's something that that's very practical. Now while this is being done, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel this export just so we don't we don't waste any time because I'm gonna go directly to our uh, to our final project. So I'm gonna cancel it. Yes, okay. I'm sure I'm gonna cancel it. I'm gonna exit out of it, and I'm gonna minimize this and go into our actual Alba meeting project. So. I'm going to open uh, it now. Yes. Can you open Alba in Pinnacle? Alba in do, Pinnacle. Do you still have Alba uh, project ready in Pinnacle? Uh, not the final one. Okay. Not here. No, okay. not here. Uh, so I'm here with the, with the final project that we were doing. And if you remember, we were putting title slides. We're putting the names. So right now, we're going we're gonna to have three final segments done for the ALBA preparation. We're gonna have first starting with uh, their uh, individual characteristics, and I'm gonna go through a few players, then I'm gonna skip to offenses, then to defenses, just so you see how it looks at the end. So remember all the title slides we're putting in on top, below, side. So it's ALBA preparation, individual characteristics, point guards, starting with Hermanson. Here we go with, with three or four main Characteristics of Herman, so we see that he's a very good observable shots. We need to limit that and be aware of that. Title slide is on top. Characteristic of the of the slide is on the right hand bottom. Secondly, we said, remember, we said we want to say his first characteristic, second characteristic. He's a good off drive. So we put as a second. Marcus Eriksson is their two men. And he is a great off-screen shooter. So this is, and now you will see in this, we have combined from several games. We said three, four, sometimes five games of the clips. He's a very good off-screen shooter and he's a good early shooter. These are his two or three main characteristics. Then we go to Giedraitis, who is their small forward. We said he's good with these floater finishes transition shots, and he always moves and cuts without the, without the ball. Here is, uh, uh, here is one clip, and I'm going to pause it because we haven't talked about it. We like and we feel it's very good. For example, you can see a clip from our first game against Alba, FS first game against Alba. Here is something that uh, as you go along in the season, it's always good to show your players good and bad or good and correctable situations from your own game. So we like to sprinkle in a clip or two from your own game, from our game in this case, where we didn't pay enough attention or he took some quick shots against us, just to keep the player's mind refreshed uh, when they watch themselves making a similar mistake, not to repeat the same mistake, hopefully. Not overdo it, but uh, do it to a certain extent. Here we go to a power forward. We're going to go with Sigma. And we're going to say, what are his tendencies? He rolls. He rolls and pops. So he's uh, uh, difficult in that situation to guard. So we show two clips of those. And we say at times, but as the third option, he will post up, seal, or play one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, in that situation. So we will, we will separate it. Uh, as the option A, option B, or it's sometimes option C, and center, Noko in this case. Remember we talked about he always follows the, the offensive rebound, he seals deep, and he runs the floor well, so we will keep these as the, as the main characteristics for him. Now, as, as we finish with the potential starting lineup, and we want to box him out, of course. And again, we sprinkle the clip from our game just to keep the guys aware that this happened to us when we played them before. Here, we finished with the first uh, five. 
Now we don't go by the second five. We go by the position. So we will continue with the guards. Slide on to the slide on to the forwards and centers. So I'm gonna. If you agree, we saw this part. I'm gonna move to offenses. Uh, yes, boy. Here, I'm at the. So now we go to offense, the second part of our presentation. We say they, and we talked when we watched the game against Madrid, they like to take the quick shots, but they also look for early seals. This is one habit of their transition. So we want to show our team what the main options they have and what the main situations they want to uh, pinpoint the opponent. Same again. If we have an applicable situation from our game, show it. Now we go to the main set offenses. Same situations like that. Two or three clips with the two or three main finishing parts. One time, preferably to be a drive, to be a shot. We want to mix it and show as, var uh, as var various as possible different finishes just to keep your team always alert on what can be, what can be done uh, against them and what, what they try to do as, as the team. For example, in this uh, presentation, it's visible for Alba. It's, it's very clear. They're a team that doesn't have too many offenses, but they have various options within the same offense. So our presentation leaned in that way. We want to show many options of few plays. Here is one thing that we do at time. If we find a clip that's either our clip from the first game or applicable to us, somebody who did something good on the defense in, within the framework of our system. Then we show it at the end. Just to keep the players alert of what to do or what not to do. We go to a second part, second offense. We say set a name of the offense up top and of course uh, different finishes. We like to show if it's possible. If, it, if we find good examples of various finishes, not always repetition of the same situation. Here we saw First, the shot, then we show the inside finish, and we show the off-screen uh, off exit on the opposite side, went all the way through for Ericsson. Now, how it goes for the offenses. Always at the end of the offense, uh, so we will, I will skip through this. Always at the end of the offense, uh, we put uh, out of bounds situations. We haven't we haven't touched too much about those. We put out of bounds situations, baseline and sideline. Uh, it's coming right here. Okay. So we finish the set offense. The set offense usually start with transition, early runs or shots, set offenses, and then they finish with side and baseline out of bounds. Here. We want to keep not all of the opponent's side out of bounds or baseline. We want to keep either the most dangerous ones or the most frequently used ones. That's up to you to decide. And again, going back to uh, your own game, if you have a good clip of your own game, this is always a plus. Here we show three different finishes from the same out of bounds. And we put a message to the team, try not to lose the contact because they're very dangerous there. So be aware if you can help yourself on defense to, by doing so. Same thing is for the baseline out of bounds situations. Uh, we want to show either the most dangerous ones or the ones that we had problems with in the previous game, if we had some, or situations that are most frequently used. Two or three are generally enough to keep the team alert because a lot of teams, as you know, have 10, 12 different finishes from out of bounds. So it's not easy to cover all, and it's not necessary to cover all. And we finalize with the pick and roll or with the defense. Here it's the same thing. It's uh, We start with pick and roll. Uh, if we have situation from our game, use it. Uh, if we have situations from different games, uh, generally we like to show either how we successfully uh, played against certain pick and roll defenses, or if it's something that other teams have done, 
uh, that's uh, that can be used good in in our case. So this is uh, this is something that that's done, and we always we put pick and roll defense. And who is the player that's playing the pick and roll defense? You can put by position. You can put by however you feel. We like to we like to do it in this way, and uh, we finish uh, this part as we go through their uh, through their um, big man. We finish this part with alternative defenses or something that's uh, not done on a daily basis. For example, switching, for example, zone, zone press, anything that we want to show one or two clips that are, uh, that, are done, uh, uh, that are done by that team. So this is zone now, and that's, uh, uh, that's the, usually the end part of the, of the presentation is that, is that alternative part of their defense. In, in that situation is zone or staying after the main basket, after the free throws where they try to play, play aggressive trap. Uh, here we like to show if it's possible a good finish against their trap or a good finish against the zone. And in short, this is how the presentation looks at the end. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Uh, Coach Jakob, uh, would you want to talk? Uh, I think Tomislav really explained everything in uh, detail. Yes. Uh, what I want to share with coaches is uh, we try to keep it uh, simple. Uh, as Tomislav mentioned, uh, four, five, maybe six plays, uh, only two, three highlights from each play. So we want to uh, we want all players to understand it, not just the smart ones. And uh, also, these selected clips, we practice it uh, before the game. One day before the game, we play our opponent's offenses, and then we prepare our defense against uh, their offense. And finally, game day, we again in the morning practice, we walk through, not hard five upon five, but we walk through and show angles, offenses. And then finally, we watch all together this uh, uh, edit video, uh, let's say six or seven hours before the game. This is our last meeting. And then, then, we, and then we again meet with the team in the locker room before the game. Uh, and other than this video meeting, uh, highlight meeting, we watch two periods uh, regular game with the team. Uh, and that's one day before the game. We meet before the practice. This takes 25 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. Two periods we watch. Uh, we select this uh, during a meeting with coaches. Let's say two, three days ago. Uh, what is which game is better to watch with players? Uh, we prefer to come up with a game uh, that they score their main players are playing efficient game, or uh, also not only on offense but also on defense. And of course, we want a little bit high scoring period uh, to see their offensive options. And this is this uh, material is our first meeting one day before the game. And then Coach Tomislav's presentation, our uh, game edit is our game ending. And usually we uh, prepare two meetings for every game. So, uh, and Coach Tomislav, uh, as I mentioned earlier, he has to uh, prepare this uh, every other day. So because we play one game and then practice two days and then we play game, official game. Maybe we practice one more day and then we play one more game. So he, he is really quick and uh, successful in his job and we are really comfortable with that. Uh, also, uh, I think he mentioned, uh, but maybe I missed, uh, in edit videos when we select the offenses, last highlight, let's say every offense, we show three uh, positions. Last position, we try to select a good defense against their offense. 
if we play a game with them, as you show in the uh, highlights, if we already play with them and if we play good defense in this against this particular offense, we show it. If not, let's say another team, uh, in this case, Alba Berlin added, let's say Cheska Moscow played really good defense against Alba Berlin's set offense too, which is, which is a type of defense that we are planning to use against Alba. So we also use this as part of our preparation. If another team executes same kind of principles on defense uh, like us. And uh, that's all uh, comes to my mind. And uh, as I said, Tomislav uh, did uh, it really detailed. Uh, I thank uh, to him also uh, for his preparation. And I leave the word to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... So uh, I know about uh, our uh, weaknesses, uh, team weaknesses, uh, when we are losing a game. Uh, what's your uh, planning for uh, this case? To analyze after the game. What we do after the game. After the game. So you have a time uh, to planning for that, yeah? Uh, after uh, each game, you uh, analyze your weaknesses. Honestly, uh, we, of course, watch our games uh, after the game, but if it's not really crucial, uh, we don't share it with the team. We see what is what we did wrong, what were our mistakes at the offense, at the defense. Uh, we come up with some ideas to correct these problems on, on practices, and then we select drills and maybe little bit modify our drills according to that. But some games, let's say we play, we lost uh, in a way that we didn't put enough hustle or we did too many mistakes. If this kind of uh, problem happens, then we directly uh, step up and meet with the team. Sometimes even right after the game or the next day we meet we watch whole game, we point every mistake every, uh, as a team or as a player, we talk and we have to finish it as quick as possible because we have other games coming. So if something bad happens, we correct it, we talk about it, we don't just sleep on it. We uh, talk about this topic uh, and then uh, we, want to, we want all players to be on the same page as how to be done correctly. And then we want to see it in practices that we are getting rid of these mistakes and correcting uh, our mistakes. And then we move on because we don't have too much time. We don't have all week to prepare uh, the correct these mistakes. And of course we are lucky. We do have uh, smart players, uh, high quality players. They have good fundamentals. So uh, sometimes even when you show their mistakes to them, it's, it's usually enough for them to realize and correct. Uh, of course, not everything because uh, basketball is a complex sport, it's constant decision making and you have to make repetitions, practice again and again to correct some mistakes. But as I said, we are lucky because we are working with really good players. So correcting mistakes or changing habits is a little bit easier for us. I see. Thank you. Uh, so if there is any, any question from other coaches, let me know. Maybe Mohamed Ansari. Uh, Mohamed. Mr. Mohamed. Hello, coach. Hello, coach Yakub. Uh, Hello. Uh, and uh, I have a question. Uh, should team substitutions be included in game analysis to check the replacement time, game status at the time of replacement and uh -huh. uh Actually, we don't focus on this subject. Uh, Usually, I think NBA teams care more about this 
because they have these uh, patterns that before the game they prepare uh, a game plan that it's almost almost certain which player starts, which player comes from the bench in which uh, period or which specific uh, time of the game. But Euroleague teams uh, prepare their teams differently. Uh, so uh, you never know. We sometimes uh, even don't know the starting five of the uh, opponent. We always, uh, in these coaches' meetings, uh, sometimes we share our, our ideas about starting fives because, as you see in the uh, edit video, we first start with individual player characteristics and we put their starting five. Sometimes for, we, are, we have a four coaches' uh, rosters, so each four of us, we uh, come up with different starting lineup. Because in Euroleague, uh, because of the injuries, because of the players' uh, form, uh, players' shape, uh, the lineups change a lot. Not just starting lineups, but also during the game, uh, the, uh, some, let's say, a specific player usually comes, joins the game at the end of first quarter, but you never know, next game, he, he even doesn't play all half. This also happens to us. We change our starting lineup all the time. So actually, we don't care about uh, this uh, during our uh, game preparation. As I mentioned, only we try to figure out starting lineup. They are starting. Lineup. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Uh, to Miss Love. Thank you, too. Thanks, sir. Uh, Mr. Amin. Amin. So maybe the microphone doesn't work. If there's another question, let me know, please. No, no one have question. That was clearly, that was great. Thank you, Coach uh, Tomislav and Coach Thank Jakob. You. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, Murat Coach uh, to help me to have you, both of you great coaches. And this week we have a lot of uh, Turkish coaches and we called this week uh, Turkish coaches name, yeah. Uh, and I hope to uh, have you again uh, with uh, Fatih coach and Erdem coach uh, to have you here. It's my big pleasure to have you today. Uh, stay safe. Uh, have a good time. Stay safe all. Hayırlı Ramazanlar. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.